welcome to Cancer Research Simplified. I am Aigun Shahin and thank you for being here. Now you might wonder what this casualty is all about, but this is the video I was talking about you before, which how you can protect yourself from the dangerous radiation of the sun, which may cause skin cancer. Now later in the video, I'm going to show you some sunscreen products that I'm using myself and I'm also going to demonstrate how to put on sunscreen which will be effective and will protect you from the dangerous UV lights. So now we will talking about skin cancer and the dangerous UV lights. So here we go. The simple answer for this is because we want to prevent getting skin cancer. There are several types of skin cancer which may be caused by the dangerous UV radiation from the sun, which we will be talking about in a minute. But such cancer types are squamous cell carcinoma, which is the most common type of skin cancer. We have talked about squamous cell carcinoma in more detail in the episode 11. I encourage you to watch that episode to get a better understanding of squamous cell carcinoma. The other skin cancer type is basal cell carcinoma, which can occur in the head and the neck. The other type is, I know that you have heard of this type of skin cancer, and that is malignant melanoma. I have also discussed malignant melanoma in detail in our episode number one, which is called cancer types. Malignant melanoma is less common than squamous cell carcinoma and basal cell carcinoma, but is the most deadly type of skin cancer. In fact, 75% of all deaths related to skin cancer was caused due to malignant melanoma. Now let's talk about the UV radiation A and UV radiation B. Usually sunscreens have a SPF factor. The SPF factor is usually calculated by the protection of the UV radiation B. UVA and UVB are both penetrating deep into the skin, however at different levels. Usually sunscreens do not contain any blockage towards UVA, it's therefore highly recommend to use a broad spectrum of sunscreen which protects you from both UVA and UVB. To have you better understand the effects of UVA radiation A and UV radiation B, I'd like you to think of aging when we talk about UV radiation A and think about burning when we talk about UV radiation B. Both may cause eventually skin cancer. As I mentioned before, you will need to use a sunscreen that has a broad spectrum which will protect you from UVA and UVB. And do not be fooled by the sun protection of the sunscreens. What you need to use is a sun block. The reason why I'm saying this is because sun blocks contain certain molecules, organic or inorganic molecules, that either absorbs the sun radiation deep in the skin and scatters from there or it reflects from the skin surface. This typical sun absorber of UVA is avobenzone. You can find this ingredient in many sunscreens. Avobenzone is a protector for UVA. However, titanium dioxide and zinc oxide are the ones that actually protects you from UVA and UVB. There's also differences between these molecules and that is amobenzone absorbs the UV radiation into the skin and then scatters from there. Titanium dioxide and zinc oxide are layered on the surface and reflects the UV radiation from the skin surface. So many products that I'm also going to show you later in this video. For example, this Neutrogena product, which I'm used to use a lot, has ingredients that absorbs the UV radiation into the skin and then scatters from there. And there's another product here, which is also from Neutrogena, but there's the baby version for it. It's also broad spectrum, but it contains titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. These molecules, instead of absorbing the UV radiation, it reflects it from the skin surface. But what's the big deal about either the sun absorption or the sun reflection? 
the problem with the sun absorption is that by these inorganic and organic molecules is that when sun gets absorbed by these molecules and be blocked there by these molecules deep in the skin tissue it scatters and therefore it makes it inactive right what happens is that when the sun radiation is absorbed by these molecules deep in the skin and scattered from there it releases free radicals and free radicals may cause cell damage and can also bind to the DNA and may cause DNA damage, which both may lead eventually to cancer. The best way you can protect yourself is to use a sunscreen every day that has a broad spectrum and has a SPF of minimum 15 or 20, 25 is also great. I myself use a sunscreen that has a broad spectrum and has an SPF of 60, 70, sometimes also 80 for my face, 50, 55 or sometimes 60 on my body. The good thing is some beauty products such as some makeups or moisturizers can also contain sun blocking ingredients such as titanium dioxide or zinc oxide and sometimes even both. But usually, the beauty products have contain titanium dioxide. It is great because it can block the sun away while you're wearing your makeup. But it is usually SPF of 15. And if you want to protect yourself more, uh, for a daily usage is fine. But I would go if you're really on the burning sun, then uh, that sh shouldn't be enough. And you definitely need to wear a sunscreen that has a more SPF factor. I also have talked about free radicals and free radicals are very dangerous and the killers for free radicals are antioxidants. Antioxidants can bind to the free radicals and make them functionless. So that's a good thing when you take in antioxidant that can bind to the free radicals and that will be protecting you from the dangerous effect from the UV lights. Particularly if you use sunscreens that have molecules that absorbs the sun radiation instead of blocking them and reflecting away from the, from the skin surface. And that's a good thing that you will take in antioxidant. Best source for antioxidants are soy, which has a great amount of antioxidant and also green tea as well as vitamin C. So if you would take those in, they will help you and protect you from the scattered UV radiation. There are also some sunscreens out there that contain a very powerful antioxidant, which is called idobenon. And you may also protect yourself from the scattered UV radiation by using a moisturizer underneath the sunscreen that contains antioxidant. Another way you can protect yourself is to wear sun protective clothes. And you see in the beginning of the video I have worn a shirt. This shirt has an SPF factor 30. This is a great way to protect yourself and I use this shirt a lot. Then I also have a pant that has a SPF factor 30 and also my head has also an SPF factor 30. So I use these clothes a lot so people who know me know that I use these a lot when I go out in the sun uh, for hiking for any activities in the sun so those are really great. So now there are more and more different types of sun protective clothes out there and I highly encourage you to wear those if you not get a chance to buy such sun protective clothing, which are also not that expensive anyway, you can also wear dark colored clothes and also fabrics that are tightly woven. I encourage you to stay in shade on the peak hours of the sun, which is 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And it's also important for you to layer and layer your sun protection, your sunscreen. There's no such thing called waterproof sunscreens. And water resistant, maybe, yes, they may function, which repels the water a little bit. But it is important that you reapply your sunscreen every two hours. It depends on, of course, on the SPF factor. The higher the SPF factor is, the later you will 
get burned so that the reapplying time will be longer. But if you're using an SPF factor 30, the time that you will get burned will shorten. So you will reapply more often. So overall, I would recommend you to reapply your sunscreen every two hours. And as I said, it is not smart to go outdoors without using a sun protection. So you might wonder, when I use all this sunblock, what about my vitamin D production in my body? And you're right, that's a great question. Keep in mind that people who are living in places such as New England have vitamin D deficiency anyway. The reason for that is the short summer period. And usually it's recommend that people like us living in New England taking vitamin D supplements anyway, and that is about 1,000 international unit per day. And this is uh, also great for women anyway, especially in the later ages of women. So there's no point of not taking any vitamin D supplements and that's actually really good for you. Another thing is I highly encourage you to wear is a sunglass. Wearing a sunglass is so important because it protects your eyes also from the UV radiation. I encourage you when you purchase your sunglasses, make sure that it has a UV protection. And please keep your newborns out of the sun. Sunscreen should be used on babies from the age of starting from six months. And also, please do not use tanning beds.